Hi everyone, welcome to Let's Learn ES6. My name is Ryan Cristiani. Uh, I'm a developer and an instructor living in Toronto. In this series, I want to go over some new features available to you in ES6. If you haven't heard about ES6 yet and you want a quick overview, check out the link in the description below. It's to my talk, ES6 Easy Wins from Full Stack Toronto, uh, last November, November 2015. Uh, the Let's Learn series, Let's Learn ES6, will be go, going over uh, the features that I talk about in that talk, uh, and then we're actually going to kind of go beyond that. We're going to talk about some things that require a little bit more research, but hopefully this series will help you get a grasp of what's going on there. In this intro vid, uh, video, we're going to talk about three things, the let and const keywords, uh, and also template strings or template literals. To test these out, we're going to be using JSBin. Uh, if you haven't used JSBin before, just go to jsbin.com. Uh, you'll just get a, a window that looks something like this. What we want to do is we only want to use the JavaScript and console um, panes. So if you just uh, click on HTML and output and just click on Java, or the console, uh, you'll just get those two up and running. The next thing we're going to want to do in order to use uh, these new features now is on the left hand side here, you'll see this JavaScript. If you click on it, there's a little bit of a drop down here that lets you uh, pick a transpiler. And in, further, uh, in a next video or a uh, video coming up, what we'll do is we'll discuss how we can use these transpilers and uh, ultimately we'll be looking at Babel or Babel and how we can use that. But for us today, we need to select ES6 slash Babel. So, first thing I want to talk about is let's talk about the let keyword. The let keyword is a new keyword available to us in JavaScript or uh, ES6. Um, basically, when we define a variable now, we use the var keyword. We can say var name equals Ryan. Let lets us change it to that. Not much changes, uh, really. We still define a variable. We're just using a new keyword. However, uh, when we use the var keyword, uh, the scope of that variable exists in what's called function scope. So if we create a variable inside of a function, say function, say name, and we say var name equals Ryan. And let's remove this one up here so we don't get confused. And then we run the function down here and then try to console.log Ryan. or it's straight console.log the name, you'll see that we get, in our case on JSBin, JSBin output. What that means is there is nothing to output. It's undefined. Defining the variable inside of this function has scoped it to stay, excuse me, inside of this function. This is great. Um, and this works really well. If we define another function inside of here, due to the power of closures, this variable is available inside of the function inside of this function, and so on. However, in JavaScript, we've never had the ability to use block scoping. So the let keyword looks something like this, if you remember, will allow us to uh, block scope our variables. What does that mean? Well, if you look at something like this, so if we create an if statement, say if, we'll just make it always true. And I say, move this into there. This effectively is what we call a block. Anything between those curly brackets is a block. Functions themselves also have blocks. The function body is a block of code. But the great thing about this is uh, if I try to use this variable outside of this block, so if I try to do this, just clear this output and hit run, you can see that we get the same effect. It's undefined. And in fact, if we change this to a var and hit run, you would see that we get Ryan. So the let keyword allows us to block scope our variables. And this is a feature that's been available in other programming languages, but uh, up until now, we haven't had this in JavaScript. Uh, basically, you just kind of assumed or you would make sure that you understood where the variables are. As a new learner, uh, possibly somebody coming from a different language, uh, this could be confusing because you uh, our function scope could be confusing because uh, you would want to assume maybe if you create an if statement or a block of code that everything would stay inside of it. That's not quite the case. I think the biggest source of confusion is something that looks like this. So if we create a basic for loop, oops, let's just do it to 10. We'll just do i++ for now. And go console.log i. A lot of people assume, especially new learners or new students, that when you create var i equals zero, the i will only be available inside of this for loop. 
However, if you try to console.log, let's say outside loop, and we'll just clear this and hit run, you'll see that i is actually available outside of the loop. It's available outside of this block. Um, but if we use the new let keyword, and I'm just going to clear this and hit run again, you'll see that it goes 0 all the way up to 9. So it goes through the loop. And then we get an error. i is not defined. So now this i value uh, is only scoped inside of this block. And a block in JavaScript is effectively, again, anything between curly brackets. In fact, you could even do something like that. You could just have curly brackets if you wanted and say, uh, let name equal Ryan and try to access name outside of there. And it will not be available. And we can see that we get the JS bin output. So that's pretty neat. So it gives us the ability to, to block scope uh, our variables if we want to. Now, you don't want to go into, if you're starting a project or taking on a project that was written, say, with ES5 or just a regular JavaScript, nothing new, uh, you don't want to go and just replace all the vars with let. Um, if you're taking on a new project or you're starting a new project, this is where I would start using let. But ultimately, you don't want to just go replace everything because uh, you might not even know it, but your var, the, the, the use of the var uh, might, um, um, changing var to let might kind of clash with how it's being used and uh, just to avoid bugs. Just only do it on new projects. The next thing I want to talk about is the const keyword. So uh, the const keyword is basically the same as uh, let. And maybe we do const, uh, or we use the const keyword instead of the let keyword. Uh, it is block scoped. It uh, follows all those same features. However, there is one difference. Uh, in other languages, we have this idea of a constant value, a, a value that cannot be changed. Uh, in JavaScript, if we wanted to have a constant value, we would do something like this. We'd say var API key equals, and then you know some key. We would use uppercase uh, letters. This is just kind of a convention that was developed. And uh, whenever you saw these uppercase letters, you just knew that that value is supposed to be a constant. It was supposed to be never, never supposed to be changed. However, you could change it because just defining it with the var keyword, we could actually go and change the value stored in that variable. So I could say, I don't know, some way down the line, maybe you're like, actually, the API key should be this thing. And then that would probably break your program. However, with the const keyword, so if you replace var with const, we get a read-only value. So once you define it, you can no longer change the value stored inside of the variable. So first things first, I'll just go console.log uh, API underscore key. And if we hit run, we'll see our value there. But maybe we try to change that. We go API key equals, uh, I changed it. Oops. If I could spell, there we go, and console.log API key. Yep, there we go. You'll see that nothing happens. What is actually going on here is this is actually causing a, a, a silent error, uh, and it's just failing um, and not allowing us to change it. So we're not actually allowed to do anything. Um, and this is great, actually, because uh, this gives us the ability to create variables that cannot be changed. So if we need, uh, I, I mean, when you think about it, mostly things like API keys, secret keys, like if it's an AWS key, something like that, you want to make sure that it stays uh, constant. You don't want it to somehow be altered and changed during your program's um, lifecycle. The last thing I want to talk about is template strings and template literals. So uh, right now in JavaScript, when we want to create a string, uh, let's go say let, we'll use the new one, name equal, you can use double or single quotes to create a string. Uh, so this will be a, the string Ryan. Uh, and if we use single quotes, this is also a string. The whole convention here is that uh, pick double or single quotes and just sort of use that as your um, uh, string syntax throughout your program. However, inside of JavaScript, uh, or inside of ES6, I should say, we have this new uh, template strings and template, or template literal, I should call it. Uh, 
Basically, if we replace our double or single quotes with a backtick character, that is the character right under your escape key on your keyboard, uh, this creates a new, uh, still creates a new string, but it gives us some benefits. So we can still output Ryan if I want. Uh, it still creates a string. But it allows us to do a couple things. So the first thing it really lets us do is we now do multi-line strings. If you wanted to do this before, uh, you'd have to add in the new line character or come up with some weird tricks. Uh, now I can simply just hit enter and say, Ryan, this is a new line. And if you run that, you'll see that it actually gives you a new line. So we can actually have these multi-line um, strings. The next thing this allows us to do is uh, a better concatenation. So just to review, concatenation as of uh, ES5, or the late last version of JavaScript, looks something like this. So maybe we have name, uh, or maybe var first name equals Ryan, var last name equals, oops, oops, if I could type. One thing I'm really terrible at is typing. Christiani, and maybe we wanted the sentence console.log uh, my name is and Brian Christiani, so I'd have to use these variables. So I'd put a space there, and I'd be like, okay, first name, but then we need another space where so you concatenate uh, just the space character, uh, and then we add last name. Whew, there we go. My name is Ryan Christiani. So, I mean, this is a really small string, but it's already starting to get really hairy, and this is not, not, not nice to look at. If you think about larger programs, you might actually have a much, much larger string that you need to kind of like uh, fill in uh, the blanks effectively. So with new template strings, we can actually do that really quite easily. So first things first, let's make this all ES6 and change these to let's. And what I'm gonna do here is let's just start over. And instead of using a, a single or double quotes here, we'll just use the back tick character. So here is where I would say, my name is, and then we need to fill in uh, first and last name. So inside of the uh, template literals, we get this new syntax of uh, this template uh, interpolation uh, where we can put in our variables. So it's this uh, syntax of dollar sign, two curly brackets, and then inside of that is where we put the variable we want to be, uh, uh, we want to fill in. So in this case, first name, space, last name. And this is great. If you've ever used anything like handlebars uh, or any sort of templating language available in some of these uh, JavaScript frameworks, this, is, this looks pretty familiar to you already probably. Um, the great thing here is that we don't need to concatenate. We don't need to use the plus signs or anything like that to uh, stop uh, and then add our variable and then maybe add like a blank space and then add our other thing, we can just go ahead and do it all in here. And just as a proof, if we run this, you'll see that it outputs, my name is Ryan Christiani. I will point out, you don't have to up here change these to be, oops, not like that, uh, um, string templates uh, or template literals up here, uh, but you totally could as well if you wanted. Uh, it works perfectly fine with just having those as regular strings like such. The one great thing about this is that uh, let's assume we have a big object. So let's say we have let person equal, uh, we'll say first name is going to be uh, Ryan, oops, last name Christiani. Maybe we have a method say name. You might be looking at this and being like, oh, no, you forgot to put uh, something that looks a little bit like this. Well, I will actually give you a little, uh, little extra tip here. Uh, inside of ES6, so you can actually use this um, signature of writing a method uh, where we actually have a shortened uh, method signature. So we no longer have to put function or colon function and then uh, store the anonymous function on there. This will do it all in one go. Uh, and it looks really nice, I think. It's a lot easier uh, to write out. You don't have to go like this and all that stuff. Um, oops, I think it just looks real nice. So let's say that this uh, say name function, we just wanna return, uh, my name is Ryan Christiani. So the great thing about template, um, 
literals is that uh, we can even use objects. Like if you imagine uh, if you have a big object and you want to like fill in all these values, concatenating that originally would be pretty hectic, right? So you do my name is, probably doesn't have to be a capital there. I'm going to go plus this dot uh, first name. Oops, no space there. And then we need a space here though. So we do our like blank space. I'm not even going to finish it. I don't, I don't like it. Again, we could just simply go ahead and do something like this. Using the backtick characters, uh, we create our new template literal. We can say my name is this new syntax, this dot first name, space, this dot last name. And if we say maybe down here, let name equal person dot say name, and then console.log name. I'll just clear this and run it. You'll see that it returns, my name is Ryan Christiani. So these are great. Uh, these are, in my mind, sort of the easiest wins uh, from ES6. The let keyword allows us to block scope our variables. The const keyword also allows us to block scope our variables, but it also gives us the value uh, added benefit of creating a constant value, a value that cannot be changed. It's a read only value. And template strings. If you're ever tired of uh, concatenating large, large strings together in JavaScript, uh, you now have the ability to create easy to understand and much easier to uh, write uh, template strings. So we can concatenate these large chunks together. And we also get the added benefit of multi lines, which is really quite nice. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, first introductory series of Let's Learn ES6. Uh, coming up in the future, we'll be doing uh, uh, much more. The next video will be arrow functions. After that, we'll talk about spread and rest parameters. Uh, we'll have a video on promises, and we'll keep going from there. If you want to stay up to date, make sure you subscribe uh, or check me out on Twitter at rchristiani. Uh, my website is also ryanchristiani.com. And I hope to see you soon. Bye.